So 100 years of insulin, what's happened? So a bit of a, a walk through history, so to speak, and also about where we are, what's happened, and some things of much, much to rejoice, some things which not so much to rejoice, but we'll go through them. So historic milestones, we're a walk through history. And I think, first of all, it's very important to say, uh, let's not forget the role of India in this whole journey of diabetes, 1500 BC, before Common Era. Uh, one of the first mentions of diabetes, ancient India, ants attracted to the urine of people with a very clear name for the disease called Madhumeha, 1500 BC. Further on, you found it in 1552 BC, which was in Egyptian papyrus, the first mention of frequent urination as a symptom. Then the term diabetes was coined in 250 BC. And we all talk about types of diabetes. If you go through the scriptures, Shushruta and Charaka in India, in, four, in 200 or 380, they actually discuss the first types of diabetes. So actually, the role of India in the journey of diabetes has traditionally been very strong if you go through the history scriptures. And it's quite fascinating when you go through because, you know, we always feel like, well, what are we contributing? Well, India has contributed a huge amount to the world of diabetes, actually, if you go through the scripture books. What happened after that? Surge begins. Frederick Banting, we all know the story. 1916, graduated from medicine, completed an surgery, and then you know, started extra earning as a part-time teacher. Banting believed that the internal secretion previ previously attempted pancreatic mixtures was being destroyed. So he said, well, can I find out? And the interesting thing is that uh, Banting uh, was actually an orthopedic background. So before we go to war with our orthopedic colleagues, let's not forget, they also gave us one of the most potent weapons in the diabetes. So he then forward took it for idea to John, uh, so John McLeod in the University of Toronto. And here is what happened after that. 1920, uh, he read a paper, uh, and then this is the from a picture of Banting's notes. He had the idea to extract insulin from pancreatic duct of dogs. In May 21, John McLeod said, okay, here's my lab and an assistant, Charles Best. And uh, interesting piece of history, they had a coin toss, just like an IPL final, to decide who will work with Banting, how, how history is decided by that. So the Banting and Best began the experiments, and then Marjorie, the famous dog, uh, was somebody who was kept alive on pancreatic extracts for 70 days. So important, you know, there's a historic picture, November 1921. Then came the first patients, December 1921. Leonard Thompson was admitted to Toronto General Hospital, weighing six, wearing, you know, near death from diabetes in those days. That was that's the first patient of the picture. And I think what is quite important to note uh, is that what you do have is um, a uh, history of walking through history. Now we nowadays you hear a lot about people trying to cure diabetes by diets and this and that, and, and they always try and say to you it's something new. It's never new. If you go through history, that's exactly what was said. Don't eat any carbs. Don't eat this. Try this. Try that. This has been going on for centuries. Uh, it's nothing new. People trying different ways to get on top of diabetes. These are the first patients. Um, here we go. December 7th. Look at that. Weighing just 15 pounds. And then February 26th, uh, it weighed 30 pounds following the treatment of the insulin. So some interesting history and stuff as you go along. So here come then the discovery to production. December 21, results of the initial research were presented and Eli Lilly was the company, was the first company offering to produce insulin for the commercial market. January 22, first insulin treated with animal insulin had an allergic reaction. Then they refined the insulin extract for use in humans. April 22, Eli Lilly became, began produce, preparing insulin commercially and the Lilly chemist George Walden laid the development of process of mass production May, uh, June, you had the first, you know, the publication, the first paper in the journal of lab and clinical medicine. And then Collip and Best applied for a patent for insulin. And then Eli Lilly started the first commercial insulin shipments in August 92. So there you have a run through history, what we have got and what has happened over the years. So what do you do have is a progress, as you can see, over then since then, how much things have changed. So what do you do have? 1921 insulin discovery, then you have 1923 first purified animal insulin, then you have the discovery intermediate acting insulin, then you had human insulins, first analog rapid acting insulin, first analog long acting insulin, fast acting insulin as part, and then the fast acting insulin lice pro. The point is you can see that development pathway ever since the BCs when they first talked about diabetes, first discovered in insulin 1920, 21. So look at the progress we have had over the last 80 years, 
It's been absolutely phenomenal um, how much science has progressed and how much it's helped us as you know clinicians. So the future of the discovery of insulin in 1920 and has saved and improved countless lives through the last century. One of the, you know, when people talk about one of the most important discoveries, you can always talk, of course, penicillin will be high up, aspirin will be high up, but so is insulin. It's saved, you know, countless lives. You know, type 1 diabetes, well, basically saved life. Without that, you simply die. And in type 2 diabetes, in spite of all the new drugs, but rightly so, SGLT2 inhibitors coming through and GLP-1s, everything, insulin still has a very, very significant high place. And what has been quite interesting is the constant innovation, in insulin molecule and technological advances. Now you're talking about pumps and connected pens. The whole idea being that it will move people towards better and more easier use of insulin, improving quality of life. And what do we have coming up? We have been talking a lot about glucose sensing insulins. We're talking about artificial eyelids and how do you make living with diabetes as normal as possible? So the insulin continues to progress as you go along. So what are the positives? And I think this is where I wanted to sort of take a moment to talk about the positive. The positives, no doubt, is very much about the advancements we have had. I mean, think of, I always, and those who have heard me speak, you'll hear about my analogy I use about uh, iPhone. Those of us who have been around long enough when the first iPhone came out, and then they remember the iPhone 1, 2, 3. What is the basic difference between iPhone 3 and the iPhone 13? The basic difference is it, there is none. They both are phones, right? They both answer a call. If somebody calls you, answer your phone. They both do the same thing. So if you look at insulin that way, all of the insulins do the same thing, drop your glucose. But what does the newer iPhones do? They give you better functionality. It's, it's much more smoother, got much more memory base. It's easier to use. It's smaller to use. And that's what you need to see insulin as. What has insulin done compared to the you know, just dropping the glucose? They made it more smoother. The peaks are more out. The hypos are less. You can use it longer acting. You can use it any time of the day. You, your time between your meal and your insulin time has shortened down. All of this are what we call quality of life issues. You're basically moving from one piece to another. Similar example, for example, what is the difference between the television we had in 1982 at home in Calcutta and now? Well, lots. First of all, you don't have to get it from the sofa. right? So that's a massive, massive change. Then picture quality is better. You're not having to move your antenna around. To, all of those are innovations in technology. Insulin is no different. It's a quicker, smoother, more quality of life and better diabetes control is very, is very important because I personally believe we spend a lot of time talking about, oh, we are trying to get your diabetes control better. Uh, and if you did that, you will have less heart attacks and less amputations and less bleeds in the eyes. That's our fundamental things that we talk to with people with diabetes. If you take a step back, if any of us had diabetes and heaven forbid, any of us had those complications, what is the most primary thing that is affected is our quality of life. Because if you talk to anybody with diabetes, some of their biggest fears is going blind and losing their leg because those are two quality of life things. So if with insulin or any other technology or whatever you want, you improve quality of life, the other things fall in place. And that's what you see with the newer insulins coming through whether it's uh, Eli Lilly, whether it's Novo Nordisk, whether it's Sanofi, everybody is moving towards advancements of insulin. And now, of course, we have got biosimilar insulins as well. The concept being that they will work the same as other insulins. And there's a lot of discussions in debate. Is it exactly the same? Where does it fit in? But the price differentials are an important issue as you go along. So what are the negatives that we have? Have as well. Well, I think let's not forget we still have parts of the world where, simply put, because of lack of insulin, people die. Same world, you know. And uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, we all know about whatever country, lots of parts of Africa, some parts of India, etc. So insulin is not available widely, and simply because of cost pressures, simply because it, it, the stigma of that, the pricing of that, and that is the risk that we have. Is that we have a system not just in India, but everywhere around the world, whereby we talk a lot. So if you look at, for example, the UK data, so we talk about UK as saying, well, they offer everything to everybody, not quite. So one of the pieces of work that we're looking at is what insulin regimes do you think people are on and what technology do they have based on what deprived population they come from? And you will find that people are on less pumps and less basal bolus if you come from a deprived community. So if you don't have enough money, and the same, even though the NHS is paying for everything, you still have the same problem. So in India, you will have a very similar issue as well, is that the ability to pay will dictate a lot of what quality of medication they get access to. And the issue then becomes, are we making the good better? 
So the person who has got access to, I don't know, let's say Atlantis is doing well, we can give them access to Trujillo and Bigludic, etc. So that's the challenge we have as to how do we get past that. So I think what I would say is that, and I think there's also been a recent trend where insulin has been seen as some sort of evil. You will have a lot of diet events who say insulin is evil, insulin is bad for you, you should not take insulin. And the stigmatization of that is not good for us. I and mean, to begin with type 1 diabetes, well, without that, you can't live. It's the end of story. So you can't, you, there's no point in demonizing that. There's no point in saying, I, what, I but I, I think what a lot of people do, they prey on the uh, hope, you know, uh, of lots of parents and lots of people that, you know, somehow I'll be able to come off the insulin. So if you give that sort of false hope, you'll try anything. You'll try everything to come off it. So that is not right. And I think a lot of diet evangelists also turn around and say that insulin is bad for you. Insulin is not bad. Insulin is a treatment. And I think we need to get, get past that whole thing that diabetes has got treatment paradigms. It starts from diet, of course. But we all know many, many people, the diet is not easy to do. It's very easy to sit in what I call privilege and say to people, you should try this diet for the rest of your life. If you don't have the money to afford the diet, the high quality diet, then of course it doesn't work that way. Diet, the problem with diet always is sustainability. And I think that's when insulin comes into play is that for a lot of people, this is not something thing which I would say is a bad thing. Insulin is a part of diabetes treatment just like everything else. We need to be very clear about the role of insulin. If we are, are going on to insulin, are we using insulin with its capability of trying to tie in with the quality of life? So that would be one thing. So I'm going to try and wrap up and take some questions on this, which is what is about. So these are the three things which I think is how you can look at the development of insulin, passion, purpose and progress. And that's what's happened in the world of insulin. The desire of clinicians to learn more about insulin, the desire of industry to innovate and create more insulin has created a lot of the progress that we have got. The purpose is always there. Clinicians always are trying to sort of match up with what people want. And there is clearly a lot of passion to try and innovate in this field. So insulin, if we started from where we started off in 1920, look at the journey it's taken in 100 years. Absolutely amazing. So 100 years, the progress of this field has been phenomenal. As I've said, we're talking about glucose insulin insulins next. You get to that stage and you couple that with technology that's available. You are in a different planet altogether. And I think that's very welcome. That's very, um, you know, very positive that we are here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to finish with that. And as I said to Banshi at the very beginning, this is 100 years of insulin is coming up, 22. And it's an absolute pleasure to be asked to die on. Uh, to come around and talk as well. So thank you very much for the invite. And hopefully that short, sharp presentation gives an idea about the progress we have had with insulin over the last 100 years. Thank you.